So welcome to our virtual class today. So last time we have discussed the following ICT career opportunities, ACM code of ethics and professional conduct, and code of ethics for ICT professionals. So today we will be discussing the environment of word processing. So we have start and quit word, word user interface, save and open a document, edit and format text, use styles, modify line spacing in document, preview and print, create newsletter column, uh, page orientation, adding border to a page, insert header or footer, insert page number, page break and table of content, and word processing terminologies. So let us first define what is a word processing. So it refers to the act of using a computer to create, edit, save, and print documents in order to perform word processing. Specialized software known as word processor is needed. So one example of a word processor is Microsoft Word, but other word processing applications are also widely used. Examples include Microsoft Word word processor, Open Office Writer, WordPerfect, and Google Drive document. So these programs allow users to create a wide variety of documents, including word processing cycle, but certainly not limited to reports, letters, memos, newsletters, and brochures. In addition to typing text, the word processor allows you to add content such as pictures, tables and charts to your documents, as well as decorative items, including borders and clip art. So the editing and formatting capabilities of the word processor demonstrate the application's true power. So text can be inserted, edited, moved, copied or deleted within your document, and the appearance of the text can be modified in numerous ways. So most word processors also give your the ability to uh, check your spelling and grammar, and many have built-in dictionaries and other tools to assist you in your writing. So how to start and quit Word? So click the Start button Windows, Start button, or press the Windows key on your keyboard to display the Start menu. So in the list of applications, find Word and click it. Then the startup screen appears and Word starts. So tip, the first time you start Word, the Microsoft Software License Agreement might appear. So to quit Word, click the X button, close in the upper right corner of your screen. If you made any changes since you last saved the document, a message box appears asking if you want to change this, uh, if you want to save the changes. So to save the changes, click yes. To quit without saving the changes, you click no. So if you click the X button by mistake, you click cancel. So this is the word user interface. So let's uh, define one by one the interfaces. So we have the title bar. So that is number one. So we have document one word. So displays the file name of the document that is being edited and the name of the software you are using. So it also includes the standard minimize, restore, and close buttons. Next, number two, we have the quick access toolbar. So commands that are frequently used such as save, undo, and redo are located here. At the end of the quick access toolbar is a pull down menu where you can add other commonly used or commonly needed commands. Next, number three, on the left, corner of the screen, we have the file tab. So click this button to find commands that act on the document itself rather than the content of the document such as new, save, open, print, and close. So that's save as. Next number four, we have ribbon. So commands needed for your work are located here. 
the appearance of the ribbon will change depending on the size of your monitor. So Word will compress the ribbon by changing the arrangement of the controls to accommodate smaller monitors. Number five, we have the edit window. So the edit window is located on the left corner of our uh, interface. So it shows the contents of the document you are editing. Next, we have the scroll bar, lets you change the display position of the documents you are editing. And number seven, we have the status bar, which is located at the bottom of the screen. So the status bar displays information about the document you are editing. Number eight, we have the zoom slide control, lets you change the zoom settings of the document you are editing. So that's on the right corner of the screen. So save and open a document. So in Word, you must save your document so you can quit the program without losing your work. When you save the document, it is stored as a file on your computer or in a network location. Later, you can open the file, change it, and print it. So to save a document, you do the following steps. Number one, click the Save button in the Quick Access toolbar. The Save As windows appear. Number two, choose a location where you want to save the document and enter a file name in the fi file name box. To change the file name, type in a new file name. And number three, you click Save. You can open a Word document to resume your work. To open a document, you do the following. Number one, open File Explorer and click Documents. A list of documents appear. Number two, if the document you want to work on is on the list, you click the file name to open the document. If the document isn't on the list, navigate to the location where you stored your file and double click the file. The word startup screen appears and then the document is displayed. So a tip, you can also open a document from within Word by clicking the file tab and then clicking the open. So to open a document, you save recently, you click recent. Now, how are we going to edit and format a text? So before you edit or format text, you must first select the text, follow the steps below to select the text. So we have number one, place the cursor at the beginning of the text you'd like to edit or format, and then press the left mouse button. Number two, while holding down the left mouse button, move it to the right, cold dragging, to select the text. So a background color is added in the location of the selected text to indicate the selection range. So you can find most text formatting tools by clicking the Home tab and then choosing from the font group. So we have here a diagram showing the Home button. So number one, this is the Home tab. And then number two, this is the font group on the home tab. And number three, this is the bold uh, button. So we have the table on the next slides uh, to show some of the uh, functions of all the button in the font group. So we have three columns here. Uh, the first column is the uh, button. And then the second column is the name. And the third column is the function of the button. So we have the font, which changes the font. So you can select whatever font you want. And then we have the font size. So it changes the size of the text. We have the grow font, increases the text size. We have a shrink font, decreases the text size. Then change case, change all the selected text to uppercase, lowercase, or other common capitalizations. Then we have the clear formatting, clears all formatting for the selected uh, text, leaving only the plain text. Bold makes the selected text bold, that's a uh, B. And then we have italic, uh, italizes the selected text. Then we have underline, uh, draws a line under the selected text. Click the drop down arrow to select the type of underline. And then we have the strike through, draws a line through the middle of selected text. 
Subscript creates subscript characters. And then we have the superscript, create superscript characters. Text effects, apply a visual effect to select the text such as shadow, glow, or reflection. Then we have the text highlight color, makes text look like it was marked with a highlighter pen. And then we have the font color to change the text color. So use styles. So styles allow you to quickly format major elements in your document, such as headings, titles, and subtitles. So follow the steps below to apply styles to the text in your document. So number one, highlight the text you want to change. Number two, on the home tab in the styles group, post the pointer over any style to see a live preview directly in your document. So to see the complete list of styles, click the more arrow to open the styles pane. And number three, to apply the style that's most appropriate for your text, just click it. So when you're done applying styles to the individual elements, Word lets you use a style set to change the look of your document all at once. So on the design tab in the document formatting group, choose one of the predefined style sets such as basic or casual. Pause the pointer over any style set to see a live preview directly in your document. So to see more predefined style sets, click the down arrow on the right side of the document formatting group. So to apply the style set that's most appropriate for your text, just click it. So how are we going to modify line spacing in document? So with Word, you can easily change the spacing between lines and paragraphs in your document. So on the design tab, click paragraph spacing to see a drop down list of paragraph spacing options. Pause the pointer over any paragraph spacing style to see a live preview directly in your document. So when you find the look you want, you just have to click it. So a tip, to define your own paragraph spacing, you choose custom paragraph spacing. Next is to preview and print a document. So it's easy to preview what the layout of your document will look like when printed without actually printing. So click the file tab, then click print to see a preview of your document. Review the settings for any properties you might want to change. When the properties for your printer and document appear the way that you want them to, you just click print. Next, how are we going to create newsletter columns? So to lay out the whole document in columns, select layout and then columns. Choose the option you want or choose more columns to set your own column format. So we have the diagram on the right side of the screen. So there are some selections for the uh, column that you want to uh, apply in your document. So we have one, two, three, left and right and more columns. So make part of your document into columns, select the paragraphs you want to lay out in columns, then select layout columns, and then choose the options you want. So we have uh, change page orientation. So there are two uh, page orientation uh, types. So we have the uh, landscape or the portrait. So to change the orientation of the whole document, you select layout and then orientation then choose whether portrait or landscape. So we have a diagram here. So when you click the uh, page orientation, so there will be two uh, options, whether you choose the portrait or the landscape. So change part of a document to landscape. You select the content that you want on a landscape page and then go to layout and open the page setup dialog box. Select landscape and apply, and in the apply to box, sell, uh, choose selected text. So we have on the bottom part of the screen, uh, choices, how are we going to apply the um, selected uh, orientation. So we have the whole document or the selected text. 
And then after selecting, you have to click the OK button. Then how are we going to add a border to a page? So go to design and then click the uh, page borders. So make selections for how you want the border to look. So we have uh, various uh, uh, selections here. Um, we have a diagram on the right side of your screen. So we have setting to none, box, shadow, 3D or custom. Then we also have um, options for style, color, and width. So to adjust the distance between the border and the edge of the page, select options, make your changes, and select OK. So we have here uh, border and shading options. Uh, margin, you indicate the margin top, bottom, left, and right. And measure from, you select edge of page or text. Then there will be a live preview here. And then you select OK. So how are we going to insert a header or a footer? So go to insert, and then there will be a uh, header or footer option. So choose the header style you want to use. So some built-in header and footer designs include page numbers. So we have here a preview on how you are going to apply the style for your header. And then add or change text for the header or footer. For more information on things you can do with headers, see edit your existing uh, headers and footers. Then select close header and footer or press escape to exit the application. Then how are we going to insert page numbers? So select insert, then choose page number, and then choose the location and style you want. If you don't want a page number to appear on the first page, select different first page. If you want numbering to start with one on the second page, go to page number, format page numbers, and set start at two zero. When you're done, select close header and footer or press escape. So to get back to a header or footer to make changes, double click in the header or the footer area. So next we have insert a page break. So put your cursor where you want one page to end and the next to begin. Go to insert and then select the page number or the page break. So if Word puts a new page in your document unexpectedly, it might be because of a page break. So to view page break so that you can select and delete them, go to home, show, hide, show hide icon. So this is the icon for the page break. Next, how are we going to insert a table of contents? So number one, put your cursor where you want to add the table of contents. And then number two, go to references, table of contents and choose an automatic style. So we have uh, on the screen, the selected uh, style of reference for the table of content. Number three, if you make changes to your document that affect the table of contents, update the table of contents by right-clicking the table of contents and choosing update field. If you have missing entries, so missing entries often happen because headings aren't formatted as headings. So for each heading that you want in the table of contents, select the heading text, go to home, and then styles, and then choose heading one. Then update your table of contents. Now, how are we going to insert or add tab stops? Go to home and select the paragraph dialog launcher, dialog box launcher, then select tabs, Type a measurement in the tab, stop position field, and then select an alignment, then select a leader if you want one, then select set and select OK. So on the right side of our screen, we have the uh, tab stop position, like we have 2, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1. Then we have the default tab stops, 0.5. Um, then we have the alignment, 
left decimal center bar right then we have leader then we have buttons like set clear clear all okay and cancel so now let's proceed with some word processing terminologies so we have uh, alignment so it refers to the way text is arranged in the document between the margins in horizontal alignment Paragraphs of text can be left aligned, flash against the left margin, right aligned, flash against the right margin, or centered. So each line within the paragraph centered between the margins. There is a fourth alignment option known as justified. So text in a justified paragraph will be spread evenly across the page and appears as a block with text lining up on both the right and left margin. Next, we have application, another word for a uh, software program. In word processing, the application is a word processor such as Microsoft Word. We have autocorrect. So this feature is used to correct typos and misspelled words. When autocorrect is turned on, common mistakes are automatically replaced using a default, a list of words that are stored in the word processing application. So the user can also typically modify the list to include their own, own common misspellings. Clipboard. So it is a temporary holding area the computer uses for any item that has been copied or cut. So when an item such as text is placed on the clipboard, it can then be pasted elsewhere in the document. Items will stay on the clipboard until they are deleted or erased. So the manner in which the clipboard is clear depends on the application being used. Quite often, the clipboard is cleared when another item is cut or copied or if the application is closed. Copying. So the process of copying will take an existing item in a document and creates a duplicate in a new location in the document or even in another document. So when an item is copied, there uh, it is stored temporarily on the clipboard waiting to be pasted elsewhere. Next, custom uh, co cursor or insertion point. So the cursor, also known as the insertion point, is a flashing vertical bar on the screen that indicates where entered text or objects will be placed in the document. So to place the cursor to a new location in your document, you would move your mouse pointer to the new location and click the left mouse button once. The flashing cursor should now appear in the new location and any text typed or object inserted will be placed there. Cutting. So the process of cutting is used to move text or objects in a document. So cutting takes an existing item in a document, removes it from its current location and stores it on the clipboard. So the item can then be pasted elsewhere in the document or even in another document, as long as it remains on the clipboard. Document is the file that is created using a word processor. Documents can contain many different types of items such as text, images, tables, charts, borders, and clip art. Editing. This is the process of making changes or corrections in a document. So it includes alterations to the text itself, moving or copying items to other locations, and applying formatting options to the document itself and items within it. Footer. So this is an area that appears at the bottom of every page in a document that can contain one or more lines of text. So one common use of the footer is to insert a current page number on every page in the document. Font is a set of letters and numbers of one particular typeface. So the font includes not only the typeface, but other characteristics such as size, spacing, and emphasis. An example of a font would be Arial, 12 point and italic.
Next, formatting. So the process of formatting a document involves specifying how the document will look in its final form on the screen and when printed. So common formatting options include the font, font size, color, alignment, spacing, margins, and other properties. Header. So header is an area that appears at the top of every page in a document that can contain one or more lines of text. One common use of the header is to include information about the document, such as the title on every page in the document. Highlighting or selecting. So highlighting or selecting an object or area of text is typically the first step to making a change to that item. So when an item is highlighted or selected, the next action, whether it be formatting, deleting, copying, or cutting, will typically only affect that item. So items are usually highlighted or selected using the mouse by clicking in the starting position and holding down the mouse button and dragging to the end of the area that you want to select. Indent. So the space between the margin of the page and the text. So most uh, word processor um, allows for both left and right indentation. So one other common use of indention is what is known as a first line indent, where only the first line of a paragraph is indented and the remaining lines of text lie directly against the left margin of the page. Next we have insertion point or cursor. So the insertion point, also known as cursor, is a flashing vertical bar on the screen that includes where entered text or objects will be placed in the document. So to place the insertion point to a new location in your document, you would move your mouse pointer to the new location and click the left mouse button once. So the flashing insertion point should now appear in the new location and any text type or object inserted will be placed there. Next we have landscape. So page orientation refers to the way the rectangular page is turned or positioned for viewing or printing. So the two types of orientation in word pressing are portrait and landscape. So portrait orientation is where the height of the page is greater than the width. Landscape orientation, on the other hand, has a greater width than height. So the page is turned on its side. Legal size. So the term legal in the page layout area of a word processing application refers to the size of the paper being used to print a document. So the dimensions of legal size paper are 8.5 by, uh, 8 by 40 inches. Next, letter size. The term letter in the page layout area of a word processing application refers to the size of the paper being used to print the document. So the dimensions of letter size appear are 8.5 by 11 inches. Next is the line spacing. So it refers to the amount of white space between lines of text in a paragraph. So commonly used line spacing settings are single space and double space. Margin. So the margin is the white space between the edge of the page and where text or other items can be placed in your document. So margin settings can be adjusted to include more or less space around the edge of the page and left, right, top, and bottom margins can be changed independently of one another. So next we have the menu bar. So typically appears at the top of the word pressing applications window and contains a listing of the main commands in the form of text. So menu items that are common among multiple applications include file, edit, view, and help. So when you click on one of these items, additional options appear in a drop down menu on the screen. Next we have paragraph. 
In a word processing document, a new paragraph is created each time the enter key on the keyboard is pressed. So a paragraph can be made up of several lines of text, a single item, or nothing at all. So Microsoft Word has a view that will show you where each paragraph in the document begins or ends. Next is the paragraph spacing. So it refers to the amount of white space that is left between paragraphs when the enter key is hit. Unlike line spacing, paragraph spacing does not affect the amount of space between lines of text, but instead between one paragraph and the next. Pasting. So after text or another item is cut or copied, it is placed on the clipboard. So the process of pasting takes the, the item on the keyboard and places it in current location on the insertion point. Next is the portrait. So if the page layout indicates portrait page orientation, the vertical edge of the paper is larger than the horizontal edge. Portrait orientation is the most common orientation in word processing. Landscape, where the horizontal edge is larger than the vertical edge, is the other option. Next is the print preview. A word pressing feature that will show you what your document will look like on a piece of paper if it were to be printed. Rulers. So the rulers appear at the top and side of the document within the word pressing window and are used to show the position of the margins, tabs, indents, columns, rows, and other items that are set for the document. Scroll bars. Since many documents are too long to fit legibly on a single computer screen, Vertical and horizontal scroll bars are included to allow you to move through the document and change the area of the document that is currently being viewed on the screen. Next is selecting and highlighting. Selecting or highlighting an object or area of text is typically the first step to making a change to that item. So when an item is highlighted or selected, the next action, whether it could be formatting, deleting, copying, or cutting, will typically only affect that item. So items are usually selected or highlighted using the mouse by clicking in the starting position and holding down the mouse button and dragging to the end of the area that you want to select. Spelling or grammar checker. So most word processing programs include a utility that checks for proper spelling and grammar. Depending on the application being used, these utilities may run automatically and alert you to error as you type, such as in Microsoft Word, or require you to run the utility manually. So either way, you, typic uh, you typically will be a given option as to whether or not to accept the changes suggested by the utility. So the exception to this would be if autocorrect is turned on and the item in question appears in the autocorrect listing. Next is tab or tabs. So this is or these are used to control the placement of text on a page. Tab stops can be set within the ruler at the top of the word pressing window. In addition to the location of a tab, example, two inches in from the left margin. So the type of tab can also be set. So common tab types include the left, right, centered, and decimal. So the tabs, the tab type controls how the text will be aligned if it is forced to that tab stop. So when the tab key is pressed on the keyboard, the cursor will move to the next tab stop location. Table. A table is a collection of text, data, or other items that are arranged in columns and rows. Template. So template is a starting point for a document that contains initial formatting options, settings, colors, layout, and placeholders. So a typical blank document begins with the normal template, but sometimes it is a time saver to begin with a pre-formatted template when creating a more advanced document such as brochure or flyer. Toolbar. 
So it consists of buttons that provide a shortcut way of performing a commonly used function. So there are many different toolbars that exist in word processing applications. So each of which uh, focuses on a particular topic or category. Typeface. So it determines the shape of the letters and numbers in a document. So common typefaces include Times New Roman and Arial. So a collection of letters and numbers of one particular typeface makes up a font. The undo command can be used to reverse the last action or series of actions that you have performed in a document. So when using the undo command, each item must be reversed sequentially, meaning that if you would like to undo the actions you took seven actions ago, you would first need to undo actions one through six as well. Wizard. So a wizard is an interactive feature built into the word processing application, particularly in Microsoft Word, that you will walk you uh, step by step through a specialized process. So one example of a wizard included in Microsoft Word is the mail merge wizard, which provides assistance with automatically creating letters, mailing labels or envelopes, from a list of names and addresses. Next, we have word processing. Refers to the act of using a computer to create, edit, save, and print documents. Word wrap. Refers to the function of a word processor that will automatically force text to a new line when the right margin is reached while typing. So word drop eliminates the need for pressing the enter key on the keyboard at the end of every line.